Hi, so a few months ago I uploaded this video on 3D Desmos Fractals. Well, three videos on 3D Desmos Fractals. And you all seem to like them, so here's another. Over the past few weeks I've rebuilt my Desmos-based rendering engine from the ground up, fit with a multitude of new features. So let's get right into it. So here's the previous engine. It renders the fractals with what are called implicit inequalities. In other words, it looks at every xy coordinate on the screen, runs some mathematical expression on it, and then compares it to another value. If that comparison is true, it shades it in. Here's a very simple example of an implicit inequality to show you all what I mean. As you can see to the left, the inequality is true wherever x squared plus y squared is less than 4. Due to the Pythagorean theorem, this inequality is only true wherever a coordinate point is less than 2 units away from the origin. And as such, we get a circle of radius 2. This is the exact kind of thing I'm doing with the rendering engine, except the algorithms are just a bit more complex. I may go into depth about how they actually work in a future video. Anyway, enough with the old engine, let's talk about the new one. Here's a few early renders from it. Now the first thing that might stand out is the drastically reduced resolution. What happened? Well that's because I completely changed the rendering method I'm using. Rather than using implicits to render the fractals, I'm using grids of coordinate points. This might seem rather illogical given their low resolution, but hear me out. The first big advantage you get with coordinate points is more flexibility when it comes to color. Implicits are just a flat color throughout. You'd have to layer a bunch of them on top of each other to get gradients. Coordinate points, on the other hand, can be assigned colors. These colors in turn can be given any RGB value. The next big advantage you can get with coordinate points is actually quite ironically increased resolution. Desmos implicits can only sample so many points before simply giving up. Conversely, point grids can get large, extremely large. I've rendered, rendered a grid as large as 512 by 512 pixels successfully on the order of the size of actual GPU and shader based renders. And finally, the big advantage is that of the ability to measure computation time. With an implicit, you have no idea how long it'll take to render without comprehensive performance profiling. However, with point grids, you can subdivide them into smaller regions and render those one at a time, allowing you to determine how approximately how fast the render will take. However, you might question why this even matters, given that the old engine just took a few minutes to render a frame. This brings us to the major difference in how the new engine actually runs. The old engine rendered things in a way that only approximates the way the light actually works. Areas were colored darker based on how much computational effort was expended getting light there, a very rough approximation of how indirect light has a hard time getting into cracks and crevices, a phenomenon known as ambient occlusion. I also made casted shadows, though the fact that the shaded areas aren't completely dark is also an approximation. In reality, a perfect shadow is completely dark, something which only doesn't happen because the area receives indirect light from regions lit by a light source. To simulate this indirect light, I don't make the shadow 100% dark. My new rendering engine circumvents all of this by doing what's called global illumination, which, by the way, is what RTX and ray tracing tries to do. Global illumination actually simulates rays of light as they reflect off of the scene, casting them out in random directions to simulate what happens when they hit most surfaces. The random sampling technique is known as Monte Carlo integration, and constitutes the basis of a type of rendering known as path tracing. This random sampling allows you to simulate the indirect lighting that ambient occlusion and other such techniques can only approximate. Take a look at these two examples for a comparison. Notice that in the global illumination example, the color of the sphere shows up in the plane on which it rests as light is reflected. This does not happen in the non-global illumination example. Global illumination is able to make far more realistic renders than the previous method by adding these subtle details. However, the downside of global illumination is that it's slow. Very slow. The random sampling patterns are reflected rays lead to a lot of noise, necessitating the casting of more than one ray per pixel to average out all that noise. Consequently, what was once 3 or 4 rays per pixel becomes tens or even hundreds. Render times balloon from about a minute to as much as 21 hours. And this is why I needed to view the progress on my render. I don't want to start on a week-long render not knowing how much time I'll have to spend to get it done. I don't want to introduce the bug in my engine and waste hours waiting for a fractal that will never appear. This is the big reason why I'm using point grid. Phew, that was a lot of tangents. Maybe this is a sign that I should stop. Cause these trig puns are horrible. Okay, what was I saying? So I basically made RTX and Desmos. Yeah. So you're probably wondering where the renders are. I'll show you them now. Here's a sphere that took 21 hours to render and was the big test I made to show off this engine after working out the bugs. Now here's the first thing that isn't completely boring. It's a grid of cubes. I make the fractals by taking a large primitive shape and subtracting a bunch of these cube grids from it, each of them scaled by a different factor, decreasing in scale exponentially. This is the result of that, the first fractal I made in Desmos with this engine. This technique of carving out a huge cube can make other fractals too. Take the Mender Sponge for instance, a fractal for which I made a 128 by 128 pixel image. There's a bit of a weird artifact along the diagonal, but other than that, it's a mostly good render. Later on, I pushed this technique to the extreme and bumped up the Mender Sponge to 512 by 512. I had to get rid of the global illumination for this one because, quite frankly, I did not want to wait for what would probably amount to be an entirely week for this render. And finally, here, I have what I think is my magnum opus for this project. 
It's a 256 by 256 pixel fractal, similar to the first fractal I made with this rendering engine. It's by far the largest one I've made with Global Illumination, and to me it captures everything this project represents. If you show me this fractal, I might just think it was made with OpenGL Shader, Blender, or another such technology designed to make renders like this one efficiently and performantly, rather than on a web-based graphing calculator of all things. And yet I did it anyway, because I like making horrendously overcomplicated things like this that go far beyond the scope of the programs in which they're made. I think it's fun to test the limits of logical systems like this, making them bend as far as they'll go, because ultimately this kind of ridiculous what ifing is part of what drives innovation. So anyway, a few of my renders are in the description. I encourage you to check them out and make your own ridiculous Desmos creations. I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching.